This is Lisa Niver from We Said Go Travel, and I am honored to be here today with Jeff Jenkins. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Lisa. How are you? I'm I'm I am honored to be here as well. So thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness. It was so much fun to meet you in New York at the travel show. Yes. And the most giant congratulations on you have so much going on right now and so much success. Can you tell all the listeners what is happening with you and television? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to just announce that uh, I have a travel adventure show uh, that's coming out uh, this summer, July 9th, called Never Say Never with Jeff Jenkins, where I travel all over the world uh, doing things outside of my comfort zone. Uh, I believe the show is going to be very motivational and inspiring. I completely agree. What I've watched on your incredibly thriving social media, TikTok and Instagram and everywhere, I think you're right. I think you will inspire so many people that look like you, people that don't look like you. And I love your quote that life begins where your comfort zone ends. That's it. That's the whole um, theme of the show, actually. And so tell us a little bit, I read about you that you didn't get on a plane until you were 20 years old in college. So I know you traveled from Florida by car, but was it really that first flight that just the travel blood just bit you? Yeah, it was, uh, I went uh, 20, yes, you were right about that. I was 20 years old. Um, my first flight was to Japan. Um, so I, I think I wasn't in Japan uh, less than an hour or two that I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm ready to do this again. I'm ready, I'm ready because I could not believe that we could go from 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 Florida all the way to Japan uh, in less than uh, the time it takes to go from Florida to New Jersey. And I was like, oh, I love this. And they serve you food and you can watch movies. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm loving this a lot. And so even when I got to Japan, I was just in awe because I was in a whole nother continent and country. So just so everybody understands, you're saying you used to drive to New Jersey and it took so long that it was almost yes. faster to get to Japan by yeah, a plane. Yeah, it was it was it was faster to get to Japan from Florida than it was uh, by plane than it was to drive to New Jersey by car. <laughs> so you were like, wait, this is way better. <laughs> yes, I, I really enjoyed that a lot more. And so I um. Tell everybody a little bit about how things got started. Cause I think you, your first trip was with, as a choir director, was that when no, you went to Japan? Wasn't. No, I actually, uh, my first trip was, I was in college at that time. And I did this program called Camp Adventure where we would work on military bases. Like we were contracted to the government to work on military bases. And I, I did like summer camps and things like that with students uh, in multiple countries. Oh, okay. So so you were working with kids at that time? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you, were you always a singer? What, tell us yeah, what you I, got I in the always, choir. I was, I was always a singer. And when I was in college, I asked myself, like, I was like, I don't really want to do business. And that's what my first major was. And I figured out like what I wanted to do. And I wanted to like sing and be a musician. And so I went into music education. Uh, but even when I was in there, um, I was like, I don't know what to do. And that's when my director was like, hey, um, you can get a job as a choir teacher and get paid right out of college. And so that sounded good because as a college student, we were broke. And so <laughs> I was like, hey, get him a good job out of college. That sounds really good. I like that idea. Well, you definitely have a choir director smile. You're, you're so expressive. Mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't get that from choir at all. Not even oh. a little bit. Uh, and actually, I would, I'm going to be honest, I don't know that many choir directors that are expressive as me. Uh, <laughs> nope. I, learned, I, get, I think I get all my smiles and stuff from actually traveling. I remember the first time I actually smiled, um, like consistently in pictures, was when I went to Japan the first time. I was like, you know what, I look better when I smile. And it took till I was 20 years old before I started smiling in my pictures. Oh my goodness. Well, you should keep doing it. You look great. And is there any chance we might get a tiny snippet of singing from you? Not a, not a chance. Not, not a chance. chance. Okay. Well, not that's even right. a little bit. <laughs> is, there, is, there, is, there, is there still singing or singing is yeah, not? Yeah, I, I sing on my own and I sing, but I, I know the power of singing and I know when people 
uh, you you just give them just an inch and they'll take a mile. Like you know, like I don't I don't like people will be like, oh, sing something for you, sing, and then I promise you, other people will be like, oh, well, can you sing something for me? <laughs> And I did not want to go down that rabbit trail anymore. Okay. Like that was that was 30 something years of my life of doing that. Okay, just checking because I'm guessing you're amazing as a singer. So you you were working with um students, you were doing choir, and then what made the shift? I know you had the um is it the Amazi project where you're working yeah. with wells in Africa? Yeah, and so yeah, I my and I I just started sharing this story is that like my stepfather had passed and that really like opened my eyes of like, man, I, I think I really want to do something else. Cause I already had, I never wanted to be a public school teacher and I became one. And it felt like in some ways I was stuck as one, um, not because of the kids, but just because of just like, like public school teaching and, and administration and stuff like that. I so, did it also. And I totally respect your choice. So you're, I'm with so, you. Yeah. So it was, it was one of those things of like, you know what? Life is short. He died when he was like 50 something and I was 30 and I was like, man, that's like 20 years from now. And so it's like, what do I do? What do I want to do? And so I was like, I don't think I want to do this. And that's when we started the project, the water well project. And while I was there, um, I kept asking myself the question of like, okay, Jeff, if money wasn't an option, um, if whatever you dream dreamt up was to actually happen for you, like what seriously would you do? And it was like, I had to be real myself. And then that's when I figured out that I wanted to help people and get paid to do it or travel the world, help people and get paid to do it. And, and that's what took me down this journey to becoming um, uh, the, the internet sensation that I am today. <laughs> I, I agree. You are an internet sensation. It's true. So you were out there traveling. And I think I read that you were talking about, you didn't see a lot of people like you being represented. So mm -hmm. you've taken a lot of steps to encourage that. So can you tell the listeners, like you've worked with some different alliances, you founded things. How did that go? Yeah, so um, it was my cousin who helped me pick my niche because I felt like everybody kept being like, "Oh, you need a niche, you need a niche," and so she helped me like figure it out because she was a PR rep, and it helped me realize that like, man, I'm 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 chubby and black. Like, I can talk about that. There's nobody really talking about those experiences, and I think even the books and stuff that I was reading. And I already had started down this like entrepreneurial journey about like, like, in that, and in that I learned how to like brand myself. So I always told people, and I still tell people like part of my success has come because I treat Chubby Diaries like a business because that's what it is. And so uh, the way that, that, that Fortune 500 companies run themselves, I try to run Chubby Diaries in that same manner. And I think that that organization and that, that uniformity definitely has helped out a lot. Um, and it, it it definitely has just, it, it helped me realize like I need a mission statement. And our mission statement is uh, redefining what it looks like to travel. Uh, like we wanted to change the perspective of you only saw skinny, usually white men on uh, different marketing ads and stuff like that. You never saw a person of size on there. You never saw a chubby person on there. So it, uh, a person in a wheelchair. So it's just, it's, it's those things that I wanted to kind of tackle, especially helping chubby people. And that's what I wanted. I wanted there to be more representation in the travel space. And so I was going to help change that. That was my plan. And through that, like the 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 word got around and the, the message resonated, not with just people from my community, um, but it, it resonated with the world in a lot of ways. And so um, I've been able during the pandemic to to help co-found uh, the Black Travel Alliance. Um, I was named um, by uh, Travel and Leisure as one of the most notable people in travel in the past 50 years. Um, and that was like a big, big honor as well for me. But yeah, it's just like, I continue to just strive. Um, I, keep, I keep it business, but I, I, I promise, I think you being able to help people makes it easier for people to like come alongside you. Because I think at the end of the day, that's all I'm here to do. Uh, it's like, although I love teaching, I'm still a big teacher. You're definitely teaching. I noticed a lot of the TikTok um, videos have something about, you know, how to get past your perceived limitations. And mm -hmm. I loved some of your suggestions about if you're afraid to travel, you could start local, you could bring a friend and 
I especially liked when you said follow people that look like you, like people maybe need a little more obvious suggestion. Yeah. yeah. I even think that for myself, like I, to do the things, I have really big goals. And I think that's what separates me too from a lot of people is that my goals are massive. They're audacious. They're, they're bold. Like, like what? You want to do that? You want to go to space? Yes. Yes, Lisa. I want to go to space. You do? I do. I do. Oh, I do. Oh my gosh. It's going to happen. And just like I got this TV show, like I, I wrote that. I read it. I read off my goals every single day. Uh, and I do my affirmations and goals every single day. And so like having a TV show was on that list. And it went, I went two and a half years of saying it over and over again, or well, almost three of just saying like every day that I would have a TV show and then boom, here we go. TV show that geo came a calling, you know, and so it's not just, just any <laughs> TV show. Let's take a deep breath here. <laughs> National Geographic and Disney, you are in the super big times. I mean, congratulations. You, Appreciate you didn't you. just get a TV show like that three people are going to watch. You're going to yeah. be on the whole planet. 178 different nations is what I heard so that's that to me I thought was just just out of this world and so it's 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 the dedication it's the drive it's the determination it's the people believing in the dreams that you had that I think has separated me in a lot of ways but then it's also the thing that is has continues to encourage others and I think that part has just been so beautiful so beautiful and so I'm impressed with TV show going to space. Can you share any other bold, audacious goals with us? Yeah, I want to, I mean, it's, it sounds crazy and it's a monetary thing, but it's like, hey, I want a billion dollars. I didn't want this ever in my life. And I still in some ways think it's icky, but it's not because I realized, because I having that NGO that I had, that building those water wells, I realized being, uh, a civil servant in some ways, a civil servant in some ways as a teacher. I, I think that goes that like still in a civil civility way. But um, but then also just having like a nonprofit, the thing that you run into the most is money. Most nonprofits and NGOs have that same issue. It comes down to money. But having money, I can be able to provide. I can be able to provide for my family. I can provide for families to come, like my 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 descendants. Um, and then also be able to give to organizations or create organizations that I want to create. Um, and so, yeah, that's like, I have a why for everything. I want to, um, I want to take my family on trips. I want to be able to pay for my family's, my parents' retirement, because like our system didn't set my parents up well, you know? And so, uh, I know that they're going to, as they get older, that they're going to need, uh, some, some help. And I want to be able to provide that and provide it without it even feeling like anything. Uh, so that's why I work hard and I do what I do now. I want to own part of the Orlando Magic. That's my favorite basketball team. I want to own part of them. And so <laughs> these are those are like some of the big goals that I have. Well, I imagine when we talk again that you will say you do own part of the Orlando Magic or who knows all of it plus more than a billion dollars. Oh my gosh, oh. I can't wait until I see your pictures from outer space. That's come amazing. on, come on. Yes, I can't either. I can't wait either, Lisa. <laughs> wow. Those are really, I I, I love it. And, and so I know you have the TV show and I know you have goals. And what about, are you doing a lot of motivational speaking? Because that seems like a natural that's, that's, piece. That's what we're moving towards. Uh, motivational speaking. And then just also just like, it's not even in a motivational way, like, I still see there's some like learning, like going to conferences and just speaking on how to grow and develop yourself as a person or as an organization. Uh, I think I, and I think that all fits in the motivational speaking category, but yes, I will be picking up more of those speaking gigs. Okay. That would be amazing. I would can't wait to hear you. And mm -hmm. so I know um, you had not too long ago been to Hawaii and I think you were it was like maybe your 45th state is that right um probably so I don't even remember that <laughs> I've been <laughs> to Hawaii a few times since the first time I went oh okay and have you made it to all the states yet nope still got two what's left we have um Arizona and Alaska oh wow yeah. two of and my then, favorite and now places. the territory of of our American territory of Puerto Rico 
I want to count that as well. Oh I my goodness. Um, I can help you get to Puerto Rico whenever you would like. Okay, well, I would like that. Yes. Yes. I have been there many times. I used to work on the cruise ships. I used to sail out of Puerto Rico and I work with the Destination Puerto Rico team. And if that is on your list, that is one bold goal I can help you with. Space, I don't know the right people. Not yet, but not yet, not yet. We will not yet, not yet. <laughs> and Alaska, I and mean, I I used to work on the cruise ship and I spent three summers in Alaska and I can tell you it is amazing. It is so beautiful. Mm, yeah, I got to get there. I got to get there. So I think that will make a very I'm good, play it right. a I very good, it. a very good video for you someday, your 50th state, the most, mm. in, and it's, you're in Texas now, right? Yeah. In Austin. And mm. because I think I'm trying to remember, I think Alaska is the largest and is Texas second. Yes, it is. Although I'm sure in Texas, they would tell you they're the biggest and the best, right? Uh, oh, definitely. Whatever they'll tell you, yes, they they will. I understand now why they have so much pride in this 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 place. <laughs> it's a great it's a great place, but like man, they teach kids young here. Like this is Texas. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we're the great nation of Texas, it's not a state. We're a nation. They say. Well, they were their own country, but um. So, are there any? I know they your episodes for the TV show are incredible challenges. And I imagine we can't preview too many of the destinations, sure. but are there some other challenges that you're very proud of that you can share with us now? Yeah, I'm, I, I would say that like just one, we had a grueling schedule and we were filming almost eight months. Um, and so it was just a long time, but like, yeah, I, I'm. you'll see in the show that I, I do stuff that you normally don't see like plus size people doing at all. Um, and well, I mean, we're talking from like rock climbing to scuba diving, uh, handling, handling apex predators. Um, it's, 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 it's some, some, some interesting stuff they have. <laughs> <me doing. laughs> and it was challenges that I were, I actually even came up with. So it's to be able to be put in some of those challenges. Like I was like, man, what did I sign myself up for? Um, <laughs> Well, I think it's very inspiring people. I know you've written some some articles about can chubby people ski? And I mm. saw some footage on TikTok of you scuba diving. And those are two of my favorite things. So I'm, I can't wait to see more of that. And yeah. if people want to learn more about you, what's the best place to find you? Um, mine is, I don't know what just hiccup happened on my website uh, the past few days. I would say my website, but you can also just go to Google and type in Jeff Jenkins, uh, Chubby Diaries or Travel. You can see me there or just uh, Instagram, TikTok. I'm I'm on there consistently. And is how does it work for you? You put out so much great content. Are you are you the filmer and the editor and the and and the idea person? Are you doing that all by yourself, or do you have a whole team now? Not anymore. I have a team for some things, but I do. I still am like at the forefront of like the filming part of it but I do get help with like ideas now because I need it it's hard to just sit there and come up with ideas yeah well it's it's an amazing step to have a whole team I mean you've done so much between the Black Travel Alliance Chubby mm -hmm. Diaries Building Wells we know that when you get a billion dollars you'll use that to really make a difference I sure will. And I'm making a difference now. And that's my plan. So even with the little bit I have, I am making sure that I, I make an impact with that. So I agree. You are making an impact and remind everybody again that where and when this summer they can watch you overcoming these incredible challenges at the edge of your comfort zone. Yeah. Um, uh, Never Say Never with Jeff Jenkins premieres July 9th on Nat Geo and Disney Plus. Oh my goodness. It has been such a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you me. are truly an inspiration. I really want to thank you for spending this time with me. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Lisa, once again. And thank you everybody who listened. Just, we wish, we can't wait to follow along. So thank you so much. Don't forget to start watching July 9th, 2023. This summer is all happening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.